Hey guys, it's going to be Dilmer again and welcome back to my channel. So first of all, thank you very much for joining the channel. I really appreciate your time. And today I'm going to be explaining and actually showing you in Unity how to use Prefab. So let's jump into Unity and start working on it. All right, guys, so here we are in Unity and I want to take some time to explain to you what a Prefab is and why would you need to use a Prefab. So just like anything else in code, you want to make sure that you have optimized code. You want to you know, save yourself some time. So when we're talking about prefabs, those are things that have pre-configuration already defined for you. Meaning that if you create a game object and that game object may have different components. So for instance, if we look at this cube, this cube has a mesh filter. It also has a mesh renderer, also has a box collider, a rigid body and a material. So imagine if you had to recreate this thing every time and and for this cube, this might seem simple, but if you have a very massive game where you have thousands of characters, you have different setups, so you want to make sure they use in prefabs because with a prefab, you can say, okay, I have a character, that character has a weapon, that character has a script, it has a character controller. You can save a prefab that has all the different, com all the configurations saved for you. So when you create an instance of it, it already has a script associated with it, it has a collider associated with it. So let's go ahead and create a prefab and see and walk through that process so that you get more understanding on how that works. So the first thing that I'm going to do is I'm going to right click on assets and it's always a good idea to create a prefabs folder. So I'm going to create a prefabs folder and right now all I have in the scene is basically a cube. So if I go to the cube and I, it's a very simple cube, I can rotate the cube. It has a box collider, a rigid body. And if I hit play, you're going to see that the, few, the cube is going to fall in place. And basically that's it. It's very, very, very simple. So, but it already has a rigid body associated with it. So I didn't really want to create that from scratch. Let's say that you want to create a prefab of that cube. So all you have to do is go into the prefabs folder, drag and drop that cube. And we have a, pre, a prefab created. So. What we can do now is we can delete this cube and I can drag and drop that cube to the hierarchy. And what that's doing, it actually created a prefab. And also one way to find out if this is a prefab is because it has a blue icon. So if you look at these icons right here on these cubes, they don't have a blue. That means that you those are not prefabs. Those are just basically game objects. So if I delete that one more time, let's say that I go, I go in, in, and I want to make changes to that prefab. So what you can do is you can click on your prefab, click on open prefab, and that's gonna take you to the prefab configuration. You have all the different options in here. Let's say that you wanted to add something else to this cube. Say that you wanted to add another cube inside of it. So what I can do is I can, you know, duplicate that cube, which I just did, and I can resize it. I can add a cube on the very top. And now I have a cube with the cube. So now if we go back to the, the game scene and you drag and drop that cube, now we can see that that cube has two cubes. So it has the parent cube. It also has a sub cube. And, and the cool thing with that is I already saved a prefab with that configuration. So let's say that I wanted to make a change here and not by going into the prefab. So one thing that you can do is you can click on the, you can click on that prefab. You can say add component and let's say that I add a script to it. So in this scene, we can add a new script and we can say, okay, this is going to be or prefab script. And we can just call it prefab script, create an ad. And if you notice, I have this option here called overrides. And you also have a plus symbol. That means that that script hasn't been assigned to the prefab. And just to demonstrate that, let's go into our cube and click on open prefab that script hasn't been assigned to the prefab yet. It's, it's assigned to the copy of the prefab that you have in the hierarchy. So how do you actually make it go all the way through the prefab? We can go back here and you can use this option, which is called overrides. And you can see that it gives you kind of an overview of what's been added to the prefab. It's telling you a prefab script has been assigned to the cube. So you can click on apply, or you can also revert it if you wanted to. Now, if I go to the cube, prefab and click on open, you're gonna see that the prefab script has that script now associated with it. So what that allows you to do is you can make changes to these prefabs 
right here in the hierarchy and also applying to the prefab that is saved in your machine. So that's really helpful when it comes to, you know, if you want to make changes, you don't want to go into the prefab, you want to see what you're seeing on the editor screen, so you can make those changes as well in there. The other thing that I can do is, let's say that I wanted to make a change in here, say that I didn't want to have a box collider anymore. I can delete that component, and you're going to see that option is, is going to tell you, it's going to have a minus symbol, box collider is being removed. You can do the same thing, you can go here to overrides, apply it to all, and now if there's any other scenes that have this prefab already attached, it's going to basically save them everywhere that you have it in your, in your game. So now if I go to the cube and open prefab, you're going to see that I don't have a box collider anymore. Even so, if I hit play, and what's going to happen is it's going to go through and yeah, my sub prefab it's, has a collider. So it's basically stopping the cube from going, for falling down. So you can see that that cube is right there and I can see that cube on the top. So let's go ahead and, and add a box collider again. So I'm going to add a box collider. I'm going to go all the way to the, move it all the way to the top by right clicking on the box collider. I like to have it right before the rigid body. And you can see, so, but this time I didn't see, I don't see a plus symbol showing anywhere. The reason for that is because I'm looking at the prefab in the prefab option. So right now, if I go back, I'm looking and I, and I click on this one, I click on the prefab that I saved, you can see that I see open prefab. So if you go and click on the open prefab and you make changes in this view, that's basically gonna propagate through. So if I add another box collider here, let's say that I add a, a second box collider, we can, we can go to the scene view and we can expand it so that we can actually see it. I'm actually gonna add it, I'm gonna change the offset so we can see something different. Okay, so we have two box colliders one that is sitting on the side and one that is actually surrounding the cube so now if i go and go back and you look at these prefab that i already saved i didn't have to save the changes it automatically knows that i went into the prefab and i actually make a change to the root prefab so anytime you want to make changes that propagate through you can go into the open prefab make changes in here if you don't want to make changes that propagate, you can do you can do the changes in here. Don't hit overwrite. And the other thing that you can do is you can change, you can actually save a prefab variant. So let, let me show you an example of that. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to create another copy of this. And we're going to duplicate it and I'm going to set it to be right here. Maybe and maybe this one doesn't have, doesn't have this sub cube. So I'm just going to delete it. And it's going to tell you, you cannot restructure the prefab instance. Okay, that's fine. So you're going to hit cancel. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to call this one cube2. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to drag and drop this cube2 here. And it's going to give you a warning. And you'll see, create a prefab. Would you like to create a new original prefab or a variant of the prefab? So I'm going to create a prefab variant. So what I did is I now I have an original prefab. And I also have a variance of that other prefab. So this allows you to create a variance from the original prefab though, so that you can actually make changes to the second one without affecting the first. So to demonstrate that, I could actually go into cube underscore two, remove the second box collider, go up where it says overwrites, hit apply. So now I have a new cube which only has one collider. The original cube has the two colliders. So this gives you an idea of what you can do with the variance. It allows you to modify the original prefab and then make modifications to another one if you want to make some various changes in the new prefab. So that's all I'm going to be talking about today. If you guys have any questions about prefab, let me know through the comments and don't forget to share and subscribe to the channel. Thank you guys.